little younger than Bob. I, I guess so. Your influences were probably different than Bob's. So I guess so. What you know? What got you interested in doing music and playing guitar, singing? Well, I had an uncle who was my uh, mother's brother from Chicago, Jimmy Patton. He played uh, jazz and blues guitar in the city down there. Yeah. And he come up and he used to play every once in a while in the summertime. And in one day, uh, I had this old plastic guitar that I got from my mother for who knows a birthday, or Christmas. And he saw that and he goes, "I got something for you." And I was uh, probably about eight at the time. And he dropped off this old guitar. Yeah. I can't even remember what it was. It might have been a Stella, so, yeah. which I wish I still had it. Yeah. And uh, and he gave it to me, and he gave me a few lessons there, just odd ones. And I started getting into it. And uh, I think the next week, my brothers got a hold of it and started playing uh, baseball with it. <laughs> of course. As the base or the bat? Was, <laughs> as the bat. And so that was the end of that. Fun and that. I, yeah. 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 And I think it was probably uh, years down, I think it was when Elvis came on the scene and then the Beatles. Yeah. I started thinking about that again. God, I wish I had that guitar. And I kept begging and begging and begging. And probably, I think it was 14, I think my mom and dad got me a, a K combo. From, uh, could have been Montgomery Wards or Sears, I don't know which. And I got it with Christmas and I went, oh my God, it was, it was the nicest little guitar. Heaven. Single pickup, solid body, and it played really well. And I had it for a couple of years and then I uh, went down to, I used to go down to Janesville with the buddies of mine, the Johnson Music, where Bob bought his Baldwin. And one day I went by Woolworths and they had all these guitars in the window. There was a guitar, I think it said Audition on the head. It had four pickups, about ten buttons. Ooh. <laughs> Whammy oh, bar. Oh yeah, I gotta have that thing. Oh yeah. <laughs> Still in the case. Oh, we hitchhiked yeah. down there. So I went back. There was a buddy in town that uh, liked my, wanted to buy my guitar and amp, so I sold it to him. Yeah. And I ran down, I hitchhiked down to the buddy. Yeah, wait, wait, that. wait, wait, actually walked to Jane's room. Yeah, and hitchhiked down hitchhiked. there to go to the music stores. Oh, that's cool. Oh, yeah. To play every weekend, just that's to great. play the guitars. That's great. That's yeah, the Baldwin's yeah. had that wild dog sound on oh, it. Oh, yeah. But anyways, I went down there and bought that, hitchhiked back, and it was the biggest regret of my life. Because oh. I could actually play the K. Okay. This oh, thing, yeah. you could drive a truck between the strings yeah. and the neck. Yeah. It looked cool. It had all these fancy gadgets, but it didn't do me any good, and I didn't have an app anymore. Yeah. So yeah. I, I, at that point... Uh, Tom Katz, who was in the Bushman, Bushman yeah. rival band after the profile started, bought a brand new Fender Strat in 65, and he had a, a Ampeg amp. And I used to watch him rehearse them. And every once in a while, he let me take it, take the combo home, and I thought, oh my God, I just felt that's, I mean, that's like night and day playing that guitar I had to this. Didn't you? Didn't you play drums though? I played you... drums first. Yeah, my uh, brother had a set of drums, and. Uh, he was never home to play him, so I'd always get on him. Uh -huh. I, that's what I thought I wanted to be a drummer. And uh, I really enjoyed it, but something kept dragging me back to guitar. Yeah. Especially when I was playing Tom Strat and that little amp amp, I go, man, I gotta have this. And I can't remember what, what my last, the next guitar was. I think Maynard McIntyre, who ended up being in a band with me with Stonehenge and Rolling Rock, had an SG single pickup. A Gibson, and he wanted to sell it, and I finally bought that. That was my first decent guitar. Man, I think I had an old, uh, an another Ampeg amp. Okay. And that yeah. was what I used in my first band. Oh, yeah. Call for the Ampeg. Yeah. Oh yeah, they're great little amps. So, and then I think that's uh, when Tom Katz had been long out of the Bushman, and him and Steve Showers, a keyboard player, and Gary Rowan, who was a drummer in the Bushman, wanted to get another band together. And this was like uh, 70, I think. And they needed a, uh, another guitar player. So I said, I'll, I'll give it a shot. And then we were, as we were rehearsing, we realized that we needed a singer too. I'd never sang other than in the bedroom, okay. in the shower. And, uh, Everybody tried singing a song, and all of a sudden I was picked. 
I was a singer. <laughs> so I still play guitar, but through the years my guitar uh, playing got pushed further back into the background and I was basically the singer. So I, I was kind of really stunned on my guitar playing yeah. oh, cool. growth, but uh, yeah. 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 I'm glad I did. Yeah. I enjoy singing now. I, I, I think through the years my voice has gotten uh, more mature and better. I listen to some of that stuff and then they just, oh, it just makes me cringe. You know, the vibrato is too fast and too loud and don't have any dynamics. It's like, oh, it's terrible. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so vocal influences, were, were, oh, were, 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 there, were there some heavy uh, influences Oh, there? definitely. I mean, somebody that I wish I could sing like, and I'll never be able to sing like, uh, Brian Wilson of the Beach Boys, the falsetto, oh, yeah. even his brother Carl, just beautiful oh, yeah. voices. Oh, yeah. But, Soulfully, as Otis Redding, yeah. without a doubt. When did that happen? I mean, how, or how did that? Well, was it was it like, oh my God, this is this is it, or was it a slow yeah, kind yeah. of thing? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I guess I'd heard uh, "Try a Little Tenderness" by Three Dog Night. Okay, yeah, I, I yeah. heard that that was an Otis Redding song, so I dug that up and heard him singing. Oh my oh, God, that, that oh, was yeah. that was a break. Okay, yeah. And it wasn't too long after that when he had brought out "Sitting on the Dock of the Bay." Yeah. And then he died not too long after that yeah. in Madison. Yeah. But then I said, wow, this guy's just got just the feel, the touch, the, uh, the dynamics. Just, yeah. Just, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. To this day, I can listen to him just get goosebumps. Yeah. Yeah. So I never had voice lessons. Oh, no. no never no. training. No, I was pretty much pushed into it, which I, I, I'm grateful for now because I really enjoy it. But at the time, I just wanted to be a guitar player. Huh. And uh, to this day, I'm still a frustrated guitar player. Uh, just yeah. want to catch up, and I, yeah. I'll never quite catch up to where I want to be. But yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's well, still fun playing. Yeah, goals. Yeah. I mean, I, I, you read people like uh, I don't know Danny Gatton or Eric Johnson. They're, they're still learning. I mean, oh, they're yeah. masters, and they're still yeah. learning. Yeah. So you know, there's no end to them. Oh, yeah. what you can learn. Yeah. 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 Earl Cool has often talked about George Benson when he was playing with him. He said, you know, when we got done with a gig with George, and I was playing with him, he said he'd go home and practice for, for six hours after the gig. Well, Earl said, is that what it takes to make it? He says, well, I better, I better keep going. That's yeah. the same thing. You know, those guys are just driven. Well, there's sometimes just when you go hear a band, sometimes it really moves you. You do. You go home and you pick up the guitar. And oh, yeah. 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 Either you try to create something or you just want to yeah. practice. And yeah. It's inspiration. Yeah. yeah. And it's always there. Oh, no. So the, the slide guitar, that, you know, a, a lot of people, oh. were, how, did, how did that begin? Or well, in my bedroom, yeah. believe it or not, with a butter knife. Yeah. I was just experimenting. Because I, right. <laughs> I really like the old Santo and Johnny song, Sleepwalk, oh, you know, and I thought, yeah. I had no idea how they did it at that point. Yeah. I was pretty young. Yeah. But I loved it. I thought, yeah. I just, it's a slide thing. I said, it's not a, you're not bending it, you're not, there's something else. And I'm going, yeah. and I watched, uh, couldn't Google it? <laughs> uh, no, not at that point. Yeah, yeah. But I saw some guys on TV back in the old uh, uh, Louisiana Hayride days that were playing pedal steel. And I saw this bar. I thought, well, they're just sliding across there. So I tried a butter knife. And it it worked, but it, was, it really wasn't very uh, yeah. successful at that. But So through the years, uh, the Alma Brothers came out. And they were doing the uh, Life to Film War, I thought. Doing almost a phenomenal slide player at the time, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. so I thought I'll, I'm going to buy a slide, and, and I started out playing slide with the uh, normal tuning, which most slide players don't do. Yeah. They use open tuning yeah. now, and, and it, when I learned Statesboro Blues, it, it was actually easier to play it in the, the normal tuning than was when the open tuning. I tried it years later, and I thought, how the hell? I still yeah. don't know how he was tuned to that thing. But I just started out and I just practiced and practiced and it's a couple songs back in the day in the 70s. I think it was uh, Jojo Gunn. You remember that group? Sure. That oh, song yeah. called Jay, Run, Run, Run. Jay Ferguson, the little yeah. spirit yeah. spin-off. Yeah. yeah. Guitar player, good little slide. slide that was my first slide yeah. song in the band. So we used to play that song. Yes, yeah. we did. Yeah. Yeah. So that was my first slide song, and then just picked a few here and there since yeah. then. And yeah. Then I learned about open tunings and yeah. Yeah. it took me off. In a whole new direction. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's, that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, do you remember the first time we saw Wayne? In Milton. Yes. Yeah, I remember know. That? Yeah, yeah, we were, we're all, going, we're all, yeah. Stonehenge. 
Oh yeah, that yeah. was at the uh, uh, sell, sell something roll. Uh, it was a long, it was a long yeah, neuro, neuro, neuro yeah. bar. I remember it, you guys it, coming over there. Yeah? I do remember that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, I didn't. I didn't know you. I didn't know you then. No. Nope. Had no idea. And I remember we stayed. Bob Lee was with us that mm -hmm. night, and we we went over. Uh, heard about the heard about your band. You know, I said, well, we gotta check this out. See what's yeah. see what's going on. You know. And I remember on the break uh, talking with Steve, your keyboard right. player. You know, uh, uh, but the memory I had that night was you singing, reeling in the ears, saying, did you hear that? Did you hear that guy sing over there? That was something, you know? That was really, that was a real yeah. deal, you know? Yeah. That was really, that was really good. And that, that's really the thing that stuck out, little did I know it was Wayne. Yeah. Or, or, and the, the next time I heard Wayne play after that, that I can, that I can remember, was a barn swallow gig. With Dan, with Dan oh, Riley, sure. um, because we started doing these da barn swallow gigs, mm -hmm. and Bob invited me over one day. They they already had this thing going. And Bob said, "Hey, Rick, why don't you come over? We could use another guitar player or, or whatever." And it was a real loose thing. I came over and played, and, and it was either a Fourth of July or a Tobacco Days gig, and and the, and, and you were you were playing that day. So I remember I remember I remember you doing Runaway that day. Oh, okay. Yeah, the Bonnie yeah. Bonnie Ray yeah, version. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. Oh, this is pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Then you're playing. You were playing your strat. Yeah. Yeah. That, that you should yeah. maybe talk about your strat too, Wayne. That, everybody yeah. wonders well, about that. Yeah, yeah, that's the one that uh, Tom Katz bought, who was in the the Bushman with Gary Rowan, the other band, right after the Profiles. And he bought it at '65, and I, I think it went through two other hands before I got it back in the '70s. And uh, I always wanted that guitar, and I finally had a chance to buy it, believe it or not, for seventy-five dollars. Wow. And I offered the guy eighty. I says, I, you know, I can't take that for seventy. Of course, <laughs> yeah, oh, man, yeah. I can't take that for seventy-five. <laughs> yeah, I'll give you five bucks more for that. <laughs> but, he, but he really wanted to sell. He really wanted to sell a band. I don't want anybody else to get this. So, and I wasn't rich at that time. I, I, I don't even think I was working. I. I, I I dug up the money from I borrowed from somebody, sure. So I just made me feel a little better to borrow an extra five bucks. Because I knew I was getting a steal on that. Yeah. But uh, I've had it ever since. It was my main guitar for a long time. When I first started out, it was Les Pauls. And I first had the SG I told you about. Yeah. I bought Les Pauls. I had a Les Paul uh, Gold Top with the mini humbuckers, and then I had a Les Paul Custom. Yeah. Yeah. And I just got used to it. I loved them. But when I first started playing the Strat, there was just something about that. It was so versatile and different. Yeah. It was a little harder to bend notes with the Strat because oh, yeah. of the neck length and that. Yeah, but, yeah. Yeah. but after I got used to it, I just, I, I, I'll never go back. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll never get rid of that guitar. Now it's just primarily my slide guitar. Yeah. Whenever anyone sees it, they always. Is it yeah, original? it's definitely road worn. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. It's the original relic. Right. Yeah. 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 Flip over. But I remember the first time I saw you guys too. It was, uh, um, remember the Red Baron Cellar? Oh sure. Yeah. Yeah. The the preacher. Tom Lovell. Tom Lovell. Tom Lovell had yeah, and uh, I forget who you had in your band with you, but it was I think it was the three piece. I don't think Lisa was with you at the time. Bob, nope, yeah. nope, I never played the cellar. Bob, 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 Bob Lee. I think you and Tom Katz came down. Yeah, and I remember and seeing. Maybe Rowan too. The, we've never mentioned this man before, but the Prez Jensen, oh, yeah. who was in the, the Barn Swallows. That's the first time I saw him. I graduated with his brother Greg. I knew Gene, but I didn't know Tom. I'd never seen him before. I, yeah. He got up to sing with you guys. With this, just a, a big boy with a big belly, yeah. and he had this voice that was just a squeaking out of him. But it was powerful. I go, who the hell is that? I laughed. At it was so funny. I thought, who is that guy? Well, it's Gene's brother, Tom. Call him the Prez because he ran for president. Uh, Joint Enterprises. <laughs> joint, joint Enterprises. <laughs> what a character. That's the first time I saw him with you guys. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know if that's the first time you had played with him or not, but it probably it was. very well could have been. I couldn't even remember what he was. Your response must, must have been equally as. The Nixon years. You know, when like, he, yes, he was doing the Nixon speeches. stuff. Oh, that's right. I forgot yeah. about that. Too. Oh, it was hilarious. So funny. So funny, yeah. Because yeah, we had a local guy used to play at the cellar over there, Mark Sullivan. 